South Florida. This is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Hi there and welcome to Headliners. I'm Lauren Pastrana. The Miami-Dade Police Department's dive team back in the lake behind our CBS News Miami studios just days ago, and this isn't the first time they've been in the water here. Last August, they recovered more than two dozen cars from the murky depths. CBS News Miami's Nakaya Carrero tells us what they found this time. When most of the CBS News Miami staff parked their cars Wednesday morning, they noticed divers getting into this lake behind me looking for something. That something was cars. Miami-Dade Police Department says stolen cars to be exact. A car dangles over Airport Lake in Doral as a crane plucks it out of the water like an arcade claw. It is possible that this lake could be related to something uh, beyond just a stolen vehicle. About 10 divers were loaded onto a boat and taken out into the middle of the water. For hours, they searched one area in particular. That's when airbags were deployed and cars began surfacing, three to be exact. Former FBI Special Agent Stuart Kaplan says cars can be key details to solving crimes from the past. I mean, obviously, if you go back in time, it may be juveniles who were joyriding in stolen cars. And then when they got done driving these vehicles, they just unloaded them into the lake. I asked Kaplan what would make the police begin searching this lake. He said most likely a tip where it is possible that he or she historically has some information uh, that may be relevant or probative to an investigation that quite frankly hit a dead end. Miami-Dade Police Department did tell us the oldest car that was pulled out of the water Wednesday was a 1970 model that was reported stolen in 1975. As for the other two cars, all they know is that they were both stolen. In Doral, Nakaya Carrero, CBS News, Miami. As the number of measles cases climbs in Broward County, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz is calling for the replacement of Florida's Surgeon General. Wasserman Schultz, who represents the district where the majority of the cases have been reported, says state leaders are not doing enough to stop the spread. CBS News Miami's Ted Scouten reports. Well, it was today that we learned about that latest case of measles here at Manatee Bay Elementary School in Weston. That brings the total at this school alone to seven. This comes on the same day that Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz calls for the removal of the state surgeon general. Parents at Manatee Bay Elementary in Weston learning there are now seven cases of measles at school. It makes me a little concerned. So my daughter's fully vaccinated, but my son can't get his second one until he is four. And he's high risk for a lot of other issues. Parent Demi Kavanaugh is worried. So easily transmitted that it's, it's, it's scary how fast it's going up. In all, there are now nine confirmed cases of measles in Broward. That includes seven at Manatee Bay and two in the community. The individual impacted by this latest case has not physically been on campus since February 15th. Therefore, the infectious period of 21 days remains unchanged, March 7th. Surgeon General Ladapo needs to go. Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz represents Weston in Congress and lives here. She's calling for the removal of State Surgeon General Dr. Joseph Ladapo. Surgeon General Ladapo is a misinformation super spreader. So I'm calling for his immediate termination. Dr. Latipo has made controversial comments about vaccines in the past. He sent a letter to Manatee Bay parents permitting them to send unvaccinated children to school amid the outbreak by deferring the decision to keep children home from school to parents or guardians. His letter contradicts advice from the CDC and doctors. Measles is a public health threat to Florida, and so is Joe Ladapo. He repeatedly endangers, endangers lives, contradicts public health expertise for political points. The measles virus is a highly contagious virus. Dr. Mary Jo Trepka is chair of epidemiology at FIU. Standing with Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz, she recommended kids getting vaccinated, warning of potential danger. Measles is a very serious disease that causes hospitalization on average in about one in five people brain damage in about one in a thousand people and death in about one in a thousand people. 33 students here remain unvaccinated. Meanwhile, we reached out to the Surgeon General's office as well as the governor's office for comment. We have not heard back yet. In Weston, Ted Scouten, CBS News, Miami. 
A bomb threat last week at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School prompting teachers and students to leave the campus. Thankfully, the all clear was given and classes resumed shortly after. But after the scare, a short film premiered about Chris Hickson. He's the coach who ran toward the gunshots to protect his students during the massacre at MSD in 2018. CBS News Miami's Chelsea Jones talked to his widow about why reliving that tragic day is a pain she willingly puts herself through. And that's because she says there needs to be changes when it comes to violence of all kind. Debbie Hickson says she will relive the worst news of her life over and over again until there are changes to school safety and legislation in this country. Coming on the air at this hour with news of a school shooting in South Florida. This took place in Park. Oh my God. He was a hero every day. He wasn't just a hero on February 14th. Chris Hickson is one of 17 murdered at the hands of a gunman that unleashed a barrage of bullets on a school on Valentine's Day 2018. It just shreds your family apart and how you had dreams and hopes and you're living your best life and then all of a sudden your life changes. A short film screen to a packed house at the Savoir Theater was created through the lens of the Hicksons, a singular story that Debbie Hickson says could be anyone's. The pain still prevalent, but the mission is greater. We talk a lot about the right to life, and when we talk about that, we're talking about embryos or babies that aren't born yet. But what about the people that are here? Wednesday, the United States Supreme Court heard arguments challenging the ban of bump stocks. They're devices that can turn a semi-automatic firearm into that of a machine gun, according to the ATF. Montel Williams, who moderated a panel following the film, says the timing of the SCOTUS hearing is offensive. We're sitting back and watching the Supreme Court try to justify why any person in America needs that garbage. So what I'm hoping to convey is to start the dialogue again. Six years later, there's been a lot of tours of the facility as it remains frozen in time, um, and a lot of efforts to help improve just legislation all the way around. How happy are you with the way things are moving or not? There's so much more that needs to be done, but they're listening, and it was really important to have them come through the building not just because of what happened that day, but to see some of the, the failures in terms of infrastructure. Those are things that you can fix. She's talking about steel doors, hurricane-proof windows, concrete walls as a universal school safety standard. This film, while painful, those here hope it's a catalyst. I am really hopeful that it will bring about a greater awareness as to the gun laws in our state, in our country. In Fort Lauderdale, Chelsea Jones, CBS News, Miami. When we come back, Broward teachers are getting a little extra cash soon. We'll have details on the new contract approved next. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News, Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana. Teachers in Broward County are getting a pay raise. The deal was reached after about seven months of negotiations. On average, teachers will see their incomes increase by about 11%. CBS News Miami's Anna McAllister has more on how it all shakes out. Broward teachers landed a victory today, and members of the Broward Teachers Union say many of the educators in this county have to work several jobs just to support themselves, and they say this increase in pay is a step in the right direction. Thanks to the Broward County School Board 6 to 3 vote in favor of new contracts with the Broward Teachers Union, educators can expect a bump in their paychecks. This raise increases the base salary for our teachers who are the backbone of our organization. More than $175 million is being invested into teachers' compensation with hopes of retaining educators in the district. School district officials say about $19.6 million of federal funding will expire in the fall. It's very scary considering lowering enrollment, uh, uh, facilities that are in need of repair, and making sure that we compensate our staff so teaching actually gets done. The agreement states that teachers on a grandfathered salary schedule will receive a 3.65% increase. Teachers on a performance-based schedule will see a 3.42% to 4.56% increase in salary. And new teachers' starting salary increases to $50,226. 
the cost of living has gravely um, impacted our educators. Our teachers are here wholeheartedly. They give a more than 100 percent commitment. They work after hours, they work long hours, they work weekends. Broward Teachers Union President Anna Fusco also pointing out the challenges teachers face every day while trying to invest in the future of students. Schools with measles, schools with mold, schools with broken air conditioning, bomb threats that happened that put our teachers and students in three hour outside conditions. That is commitment. This pay increase is coming from state and stimulus dollars, and members of the school board say they're also working on other incentives to keep teachers here in Broward County. For now, reporting from Cooper City High School, Anna McAllister, CBS News, Miami. Keeping an eye on the money front, the real estate market has slowed significantly because of rising loan costs. CBS News Miami's Elise Preston has a look at when homes might move again and what this may mean for prospective buyers. Americans are hoping for a spring thaw in the housing market. Rising mortgage rates and higher home prices have kept many would-be buyers on the sidelines. When you have mortgage rates above 7%, it's really been a gut punch for the whole real estate market. And that's why there's so much focus on the Fed in this game of poker. When do they start to cut rates? The current rate for a 30-year mixed loan is 7.5% with the average home price hitting a record high of $379,000. Dan Ives of Wedbush Securities, a brokerage firm. The housing market's essentially the standstill. Uh, I'll call it, it's a buyer strike and sellers. You know, inventory is starting to increase, but no one's really signed on the dotted line. Despite inflation slowing down, Americans are spending more than 11% of their income on food, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, a number not seen in more than 30 years. What is your advice to the average consumer? Yeah, my advice is we're going to see the Fed start to cut as we get into May and June. That's good for consumers. Some good economic news, the nation's unemployment rate remains steady, with more people finding new jobs at the start of the year than experts predicted. Elise Preston, CBS News, Los Angeles. When we come back, a South Florida student stepping up to save his father. See where he learned these life-saving skills next. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Pastrana. In the spotlight, Roberto Baez, a student at Coral Reef High. He used the skills he learned in the school's medical program and the training he received as a cadet with the Coral Gables Fire Department to save his father's life when he had a medical emergency. CBS News Miami's Naja Sherman has the story. The special bond between a father and son taken to a new level. It felt unreal to me. You know, so I wasn't really emotional in the moment, but after when I got to call my dad, after he woke up in the hospital that same night, I got a little bit emotional of, of joy, you know, and like relief. Roberto Bias saved his father's life. I was playing Fortnite, okay? So and I, when I heard my mom scream, my, my heart dropped because it was like an agonizing scream, like she was really scared. So I ran over there to the bathroom, my mom's bathroom, and I saw my dad cyanotic on the ground. It didn't look good. Bias jumped into action, applying the training that he recently learned at the cadet training program and through Coral Reef High School medical program. So I run back to my brother's room, told him to call 911. I went back, I checked for a pulse, he didn't have a pulse. So I just started doing compressions and just straight adrenaline, you know, muscle memory, all that. Bias's teacher told us this is a life-saving example of the importance of the training these students learn through the school's medical program. I was proud that he was able to save his dad. I mean, I mean, what better way to use your skills than to save save somebody. Through the program, students learn all about the cardiovascular system, CPR, emergency procedures as it relates to the heart, and all types of EKG testing. They learn the fundamentals to pursue a future as a medical professional, setting them up to go to medical school, nursing school, become a firefighter or EMT. These classes are wonderful for students to learn. Not only does it give them the education and the knowledge to help people, but it's a great, there's so much to do in the medical field that this is a good base. Bias's father is still recovering, so he wasn't up for an interview just yet. But his son told us about the moment his father woke up and thanked his son for saving his life. He 
he just he got emotional and he started crying. I was messing with him when he when he woke up. I was like, yeah, I saved you, bro. I, I was messing with him and he started crying. But yeah, he gave me a hug after, like when he got home and stuff. Roberto Baez says what happened affirmed his decision to become a firefighter one day. He sends a special thank you to all of his teachers and the Coral Gables Fire Department who trained him with life saving skills when he needed them the most. He is certainly making Miami proud. Naja Sherman, CBS News, Miami. And speaking of saving lives, 135 lives will be saved thanks to the generosity of our CBS News Miami viewers. Last week, dozens of you went out and rolled up your sleeves to give blood. In all, 45 units were donated at our two big red bus locations. Some donors have been doing this for years, and for others, it was their very first time. There's a critical blood shortage across the country, but just one donation can impact three lives. Pat Michaels with One Blood explains the need to diversify the blood supply, particularly in South Florida. And the thing that we like to stress is that we want people from all walks of life because the blood supply should be as diverse as the community because we have to cross match and make sure that we have the right type of blood for every individual. There's all kinds of needs for blood, for routine surgeries, uh, emergencies, and also for uh, people, for example, sickle cell. People who gave blood Thursday are able to do it again in 56 days, and those who are unable to donate can do their part by spreading awareness, hosting a blood drive, and promoting cardiovascular health. So I, I tell my patients the same thing. It's you have lifestyle modifications, staying active, not smoking. It's so important to know your numbers, to know your cholesterol, to know your blood sugar, to know your blood pressure, and going to your PCP. And there are silent killers. The thing about cardiovascular disease is that it's silent. And when, often when it shows up, there are changes that could have been made ahead of time to stop the progression. All blood types are needed and welcome, but especially universal donors like O negative and people who are O positive who make up 38% of the population. You'll have to answer some health questions and check your blood pressure and hemoglobin, but even if you've had health issues in the past, you may still be eligible, like Amariles Oria. That's the first thing that I ask if I could donate having had cancer prior and he said yes so yes I want everybody to hear that it's possible if you're not on treatment by now go ahead and come and help other survivors or people that need it for whatever reason they might have. And yes, after spending a few hours on the bus, I wanted to do my part. I answered a few questions, checked my vitals, and was cleared to donate. I do not like needles, so I did not look, but it was a great experience thanks to the phlebotomist Oscar, who made it so easy and painless. Truly a great experience. And don't worry, even if you weren't able to donate that day, the big red bus is always out and about. So visit our website, cbsmiami.com, for a link to where you can find places to donate. Thank you for joining us this half hour on Headliners. As always, keep it right here to CBS News Miami for up to the minute breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Make it a great one.